All right, for our top eight feature match in single elimination, we have Tommy versus Marcus. So, on the left we have Tommy on the Ghost Reaper side, and on the right side with the Ghost Ogre we have Marcus. So it's PK Fire versus ABCs. Very strange that um, Tommy did go this far with PK Fire. He probably has some special tech to push him this far because there was quite a bit of ABC players, and that matchup isn't exactly the easiest. Oh, I hate to say it, I have to bring this up, but this is the Stank Deal versus Dank Deal match. Shoutouts to Dank Deal, shoutouts to Stank Deal. Alright. But it is, uh... Yeah, overall, I think this match was going to be pretty hard. I think Tommy had to do use a very, very special deck to actually push himself this far. As for Marcus, Marcus had a pretty interesting streak overall. Um, he started off, I guess, 5-0. and oh. Very interesting. Tommy rolls a 1. And Marcus rolls a 5. So I'm guessing Marcus will probably be going first. Uh, of course, all these players already know uh, all their opponents' decks already. So there's going to be some more uh, anti-deck plays. You could say that. And Marcus opens with a Pot of Desires, banishing 10 cards off the top of his deck to get that initial plus 1. Basically nullifying the, I guess, the 5 card turn 1 play that has been instantiated by Konami. So starting with a 6 card hand with losing 10 cards, Special Summons his Photon Thrasher. Hmm, does he not have the Field Spot? I don't think he has the Field Spot. Uh, summons out a Silver Gadget. And uh, that specialed out the A Assault Core. This basically established a Sukuyomi on the field already, if he's going to go for it. But in maybe he's going to go into something else? Uh, now he's an Instant Fusion and another Pot of Desires in his hand. I don't know if you should actually activate the second pot, because he could lose out all his ABC pieces. So he is going to go with the Sukuyomi. And he's going to set two and use the effect ditching the ASL core, throwing away the Pot of Desires. Technically getting the effect off since he did draw two. Oh, he went into the Union Hanger. Uh, this is going to take him pretty far. He's adding another A, which is very interesting. Not um, one of the other pieces. Oh, he's going to use Instant Fusion. This could be big. He's going to be going into Norden. Of course, uh, OCG does not have Instant Fusion, which is why they don't play it. But uh, Norden definitely helps a lot. He's going to be reviving the A. Oh, I think there's a slight misplay here. He forgot to use Union Hanger to attach a material to get an additional plus, pro probably a B. But he goes into Dweller, knowing Tommy is playing B A P K Fire. Standby phase. He's going to be activating the A, the Abyss Dweller, and detaching the ASL core as the Xyz material. Uh, that stuns the grave pretty heavily, and Tommy is going to open with an Allure of Darkness. Uh, I wonder, he probably has a a target to banish, of course. But overall, getting stunned out like this basically shuts out all your Skarms, your Grafts, your Seers. You even have to be very careful if you mill with your Dante. So, oh, that's not bad. Opening with a Terror Top. Special summons out a Terror Top using the effect to add a Speed Roid Taki Tomborg. I, I do apologize for some of the glare. There, there's not too much I can do about it because uh, the light setting... Uh, Probably wasn't the best. Special summon the Taki Tom Bork in defense mode and overlay. See, Terra Top did get a new shiny bling version in OTS3. Now we get a Dante. Dante detaches the uh, Terra Top and milling three cards. Far, 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 far. Oh, a main deck. Ghost Reaper. Oh, that is absolutely punishing for anyone that's running, I guess, ABCs, BAs, probably Blue Eyes, and. I don't know what else is in his extra deck, but uh, the double Farfa loss is going to cost him a lot because Farfa is used to stun the ABC player out of making ABC Dragon Buster. Now he's in a normal and special Boots to Boots. Uh, does he know anything in his hand? I do not think so. Probably an A. Yes, the A has been confirmed because of the Union Hanger. Oh, 
That's basically two cards milled out from Dante that it was a complete waste. At least he can retrieve it. So he's making a second Dante. Let's see how the mill goes. So Boots is still stunned out because of the Abyss Dweller. Loses a Soul Charge. They lose another Boots and a Libic. No, is that a Libic? No, that's a Cow Cam. So the back row is not going to bounce away. Dante is going to swing over the Abyss Dweller and also swinging over the Sukuyomi. Both Dantes go to defense mode. Now that um, cloak, uh, Phantom Knight cloak, is banished. It's actually not on the field, so just be a little bit careful. Uh, there is no end phase Skarm, but he's ditching the Skarm to go into Beatrice. Beatrice gets bottomless trap hold. She will be dying, and uh, I don't think... Uh, yes, the Pilgrim will not be coming out to join the party. This is not good uh, for Tommy because all the boots are in the graveyard and he has not fetched out a fog blade. And without the fog blade to protect the Dante, this is not looking too good. And even if he does actually get a fog blade, uh, summoning out uh, the ABC Dragon Buster could probably banish the fog blade too. Now, Mar Marcus did mention that he got a little bit lucky. Uh, in his plays. Uh, I believe that one of his previous rounds he uh, got pretty sacky. He has a really expensive extra deck. More expensive than any standard ABC player. Well, what's going on here? Is this a pa did Marcus just pass his turn? Oh no, he special summoned both uh, Graf and Seer onto the field. Emptying out his hand. This is a, this is a situation that he has to be super careful about. With his graveyard stunned like this, it's it's pretty hard to play. So he's putting out a break sword. Break sword is like a scrap dragon. You'll have to pop something else. Then he just goes defense mode break sword. Maybe he can actually bring something back. So he's going going with the contingency play. Draw, standby, another instant fusion. That's pretty dead. Terraforming, this is going right into Marcus's favor. There's not much that Tommy can do with no back row to stun or interrupt anything that Marcus is doing. Marcus is going to get a nice you know, search for probably his missing ABC pieces. He wants to complete the puzzle to bring out the boss monster. And there's nothing really to fear at this point. Uh, Tommy has nothing, nothing in his hand. So Marcus could probably go for a B or a C to keep on pushing. And when he does that, it's going to be going pretty far. But he went with a B instead of a C. Okay, so I guess now he's going to equip a C to complete his uh, ABC Dragon Buster. Although he could have went a bit more greedy with summoning a C and equipping a B. Therefore, if he does overlay uh, the two monsters here, he's guaranteed another search. But So he's going to overlay these two together. And making a Utopia... Oh, Utopia Lightning! That's actually pretty smart. Oh, Marcus did miss his timing to summon out with C because he immediately went into um, yeah he went immediately into Utopia Lightning, so it only can happen at that Utopia window. So uh, Marcus will swing and take out the the Break Sword, and this basically wipes the entire board off of Tommy. Overall, I think this is actually a pretty Probably the safest line of play, although he could have went much greedier, but uh, overall the end result did put Tommy in a top decking situation, and everything is basically stuck in the graveyard. If he does use the Phantom Knight boots to search out the Fog Blade, uh, it's not going to help too much because ABC Dragon Buster is not going to tag out. No, it's actually pretty smart that Marcus did not pre-tag out. There's no point uh, because 
Uh, if your opponent does have a Gamaseal under those circumstances, they can't exactly do too much about it. Because there's no follow-up play due to the lacking hand size. So he adds himself using a Rota, adds the Cloak back, and there's a Fog Blade. However, this is pretty much the end of Game 1. There's not much that Tommy can do. Even after he sets, he's going to be punished. Yeah, banish. ABC Dragon Buster will be targeting the back row to banish out that Fog Blade. And I believe at the end phase, there's probably going to be more action. I don't know why the judge call was needed there. End phase, tag, and Union Hanger will activate, targeting his C. And Tommy just scoops up Swan Knight up. I guess Marcus just had all the marbles, all the right cards, all the right pieces, basically had the Exodia hand. Now Tommy will be going first, this is a sided game. Now Tommy does pre-side Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries. So what else could he side to tackle this matchup? Probably more system downs. Is that a normal summon seer? Uh, I believe it was a. Spe it, they could have been both been special. I couldn't tell from his action. But Dante is going to mill three cards. There's a Farfa. There's a Terra Top. There's an Allure. Uh, nothing beneficial so far. But he's going to go immediately into the Beatrice, and uh, the end phase Skarm is going to search. So just a Beatrice, not too bad. And uh, that is probably the glorious spot on the table. Searching out... I could not see what he searched out. <laughs> that Beatrice is so glary right now. Alright, terraforming into a Union Hanger. Union Hanger will be searching out an Assault Core. Okay. I'm not sure if Beatrice is like one of the best options here. So if he normal summons out the uh, Assault Core, he's going to immediately get the search. Even if you use the effect of Beatrice, it starts a new chain link, so the equip is still going to happen regardless. Now, Marcus is equipping the B Buster Drake onto his uh, A Assault Core. But he did not open up with one of his free special summons, therefore there's not going to be any Buster play this turn. Sets, th wow, 3 back row. Wow, that's quite, quite a bit. Passes turn, cannot take out that Beatrice. Beatrice does have a lot of defense. Uh, I believe, is that end phase detach? End phase detach, sending out boots and uh, and, and the seer. The seer will revive the cow cab. Cow cab will immediately die and bounce one back. So this is the end. This is the end phase. Oh, that's a bit of a misplay there. Uh, cow cab does not destroy the card, but cow cab does put the card back in your hand. That's actually a pretty neat play by uh, Tommy, just to basically ha giving himself a free MST, if you will, to bounce back one of the back row. Less back row to deal with, so now he only needs a twin twister to actually make safe plays against Marcus. Both players considering all their options. But the Beatrice on board is actually quite scary, even though... Um, like, there's only one Beatrice and you only need to deal with her once. If you deal with the Beatrice incorrectly, you will be punished for doing so. Because Pilgrim of uh, the Pilgrim Dante is very, very strong with the effect to basically similar to Beatrice, but to draw cards and send more of the Burning Abyss cards into the graveyard. Thus triggering their effects as well. Uh, normal summon the Speedor Terror Top. Is, is there an effect to search? Oh, well, I think uh, there's a window being uh, being paused at right now. Nope, there was no search. Special summon out the Takitomborg. Not the best hand for Tommy here. There's gonna be another Dante, or is it gonna be a break sword? Tommy is considering his options. See, the scary part about an ABC player putting like out this many back row is that you don't know which ones are bluffs versus which ones are real. And we know what ABCs run. They run Dimensional Barriers, they run Solemn Strikes, the Solemn Brigade, Warning. Like, all the most powerful traps in the game, in the current meta anyways. Okay, so Tommy's gonna go into 
Oh, that is interesting. A floodgate trap hole has been played on the Dante. This is actually quite big. This stuns out Tommy from playing any of his Burning Abyss monsters. But at least he can trigger their effects. Like, if he summons a Skarmo, he can actually get the search. Uh, but overall, that Dante is as good as dead for now. That is one of BA's worst weakness, is being stuck with a face-down monster that they cannot get rid of. With the two-card hand, there's a max C and a system down. Tommy will be putting the Beatrice into attack mode and attacking the A Assault Core, therefore destroying the B Buster Drake because that's a mandatory effect to destroy uh, the card instead. And um, B Buster Drake will be activating in the graveyard to add a probably a C Crush Wyvern into Marcus's hand. Now that system down actually is quite powerful right now, get it, being able to get rid of both A and B, therefore putting Marcus behind in his assembly of his ABC Dragon Buster. I'm not even sure if Beatrice even used her effect this turn. So uh, the Phantom Knight Boots will be adding a Fog Blade into hand. Yes. I've been confirming with the players to put their cards out of the glare zone, so hopefully they uh, listen up to that. So System Down has been played, a thousand life points off of Tommy, banishing out the A and the B. This puts Marcus a bit behind, but usually C is actually one of the better cards to have while playing against anybody. Um, Twin Twister, the back row, just the back row, ditching out the C, adding another Terraforming. That's not bad, not bad. In other words, he can still establish an ABC Dragon Buster if he so wishes. So playing over the two. So Union Hanger searching an A Assault Core. I guess he can go into A into B. Personally, I think I would have went into B into A just because I could. I wouldn't be affected by monster effects. Oh, he had a Photon Thrasher! Oh, this is this is huge! Union Hangers effect will be activating. Wow, see, I see a Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries in Marcus's deck as well. I'm guessing he has a Dante sided in just to clear out all the Dantes, but it's a bit too late. There's only one timing window to use that against a BA player, and that's the very first turn. Alright, A Assault Core with a Photon Thrasher. Oh! Tommy is activating uh, Beatrice's effect. However, it did get Solemn Striked. And because Beatrice was destroyed and sent to the graveyard, there is going to be a Pilgrim coming out. And Pilgrim is one hella scary card. Now remember that. Remember that the, uh, the Dante cannot be targeted. And uh, using Farfa, it banished out the uh, exactly what happened. It banished out the ASL core. That's why it's probably better to go into a B into an A in that situation, so that Dante cannot banish, and you can still go into your ABC Dragon Buster. Marcus decides to use his uh, pod of acquisitiveness to shuffle back the three cards that were banished to draw one card, basically turning that into an upstart. I guess he's opening up his options to play more cards. However, his A that, that got banished by uh, Farfa will not be coming back. Uh, oh no, and past turn, that is... I don't know if that was the best play because now he basically lost a monster for free. He shut out his own monster. So this could have been quite a bit of a misplay. Because leaving an ASL core on the field means an extra body to actually, you know, tank some hits. Now, uh, Tommy summons out Tour Guide of the Underworld and will be special summoning out a Fiend from the main deck. I think one of the most important things to do right now is to clear off that Union Hanger and not let Marcus uh, get his ABC ready. Of course, he can still top deck it, but uh, 
removing the number of options to, for him to go into that line of play could be essential for Tommy to make a comeback. Or else Marcus will be the one making the comeback and because he is one game behind that could mean the end of the match. Life check, 59 on Marcus. So the monster summoned out from tour guide being tethered out will be Graf. Graf goes overlaying with the tour guide into breaksword, popping the Dante? And popping what on Marcus's side of the field? So Dante is the target for the pop because that card is really, really in the way. So that dies. Is there a bit of a misplay here? Is something... Yeah, there's the target. Popping out the Photon Thrasher, opening the board for some big damage here. At 50... at 59, there's a 2k and a... Well, the Skarm is gonna blow up right now. Just needs a bit of... bit more damage to reach lethal. So, is the reach real? Nope, I guess he's not going to die right now, so he's going to take a 28 to the face and a 2k from the Brick Sword. And Tommy's life points is still all high and mighty. Very strong, basically, you know, just a scratch on his life. Now we can all pay attention to Marcus shuffling his hand non-stop. Even though it's only two cards, the number of options are very limited. <laughs> okay, well, um, there's still Pilgrim on the board, and Pilgrim is basically just like having Beatrice if you have a large hand size. Normal summon out the Sea Crush Wyvern, and I guess there's going to be an attempt to use Union Hanger to equip. But does Marcus actually have enough uh, ABC? Did he manage his ABCs correctly? Did he learn his one, two, threes? Okay, there's the ASL core equipped. Uh, but is there a B Buster Drake? Because that's kind of important. If you don't have that B Buster Drake, it's, it's not going to be good. It's going to be downhill from there. So there is a B Buster Drake. And uh, he's going to be managing those pieces. One from the field, two from the graveyard. Tommy goes into Chaos Hunter right after ABC comes out and uh, using the Farfa's cost. This is actually a very interesting play because Chaos Hunter prevents your opponent from banishing any cards. However, this actually does not hinder you banishing his cards. So. Farfa will be banishing the ABC Dragon Buster. So that move is actually okay because it's my opponent who can't banish cards, not me. And I'm using my own effects to banish his cards, it's a-okay. His cards can still be banished. And Marcus scoops this one up because he's about to take a ton of damage. Alright, moving on to game three. Marcus will be going first. Did he brick? Did he open the field spell? Oh, opens with a gold gadget. Special summons out a Sea Crush Wyvern. Overlays the two. What is he going to go into? So there's that Dante that he sided in. It's in a different sleeve, so it's clear. Sets two back row and uses the effect of Sukuyomi. Draws one, draws two. Uh, there's another gold gadget, and I think there's another ABC piece in his hand. Passes turn. That va there's a Vanities- oh my god, Twin Twister dumping Twin Twister. Basically, it's a pair of MSTs right there. Wow, that is a heavy hit. There's a Torrential Tribute. Very interesting choice against BA especially because they get their effects. But maybe it's just mainly to stun certain plays. Uh, there's a graph that's going into the graveyard. I think, is that a Foolish Burial that I just missed? But Graph will be summoning out a card. What is that card? Can't tell he's doing a bit of calculation here. So it's going to be a Scar being special summoned onto the field. Special summoning out a... Oh, sorry. Normal summoning out a Seer into a Dante. Dante's effect. Detaching the... Scar? No? Not Scar. No. Yes, Scar. Make up your mind. 
mill three. There's a boots. There's a, a tear top and a cloak. Wow! For once, he actually milled pretty good. The other games mill were pretty bad. Okay, boots. What we'll be getting is effect to get out that fog blade, banishing out the uh, cloak to get a search of oh, another boots. Maybe. Oh, he probably has another uh, phantom knight monster in his hand. Another piece of the clothing. Probably went to H and M and got himself a new piece of clothes. No, apparently not. I was wrong. Okay, he just sets a back row and that's it. He's just holding on to dem boots. And uh, end phase Garm will add a tour guide, and of course Dante will be going into defense mode after swinging over that Tsukuyomi. Well, that twin twister did put Marcus quite far behind. But uh, that's two twin twisters, so that means Union Hanger is a lot safer to play now. Normal summons out the gold gadget. Gold gadget gets, well, fog bladed. Pass this turn. Now, the thing about Fog Blade on a on a BAPK side is that that Fog Blade can die, or your monster is gonna get Farfa. Exactly what's gonna happen here. So, Tour Guide summons out the Farfa, overlays into another Dante, detaching the Farfa to mill three cards. Max C. Okay, that was a pretty bad mill, but it doesn't matter because it got rid of the Gold Gadget. This Dante will also mill three cards, and it also discard, like, uh, mill sent in a Seer. Seer will activate and probably summon another monster onto the field. It is going to be a Graph going into attack mode. That's quite a bit of damage. Attacks with basically 6,000. Wow. Go ahead, and the gadget is back! Oh boy. Someone's out ASL core! The thing is, there's just so many back row that Marcus has to deal with. If there's a B and C, you gotta go into... If I was in Marcus's shoes, I probably would go into a Diamond Dire maybe, just to get some popping action. Probably a Diamond Dyer. Diamond Dyer to pop one of the back row, anyways. Bait out one of the Fog Blades, perhaps. Oh, actually, no, there's another good card that he can go into uh, the Abyss Dweller. But if Dweller gets Fog Bladed, it wouldn't be that great either. Alright. And there is the Fog Blade. ABC Dragon Buster. Dragon Buster has been summoned. Two cards in hand. You know, this game could go either way right now. Uh, depending on the chain links of which things happen, this can really change it up. Uh, it all depends on what Marcus does. Now remember, the ABC Dragon Buster cannot tag out on your own turn. Marcus will be using uh, ABC Dragon Buster's effect to banish a card. What is he going to target? He's going to hit the Dante with the material. Now, Tommy, on the other hand, is considering using these. Wow, that's I guess that's all the fog blades. So both of them are under fog blades. Sets a back row. I don't think he should have said because he can still get out of the fog blue with the ABC Dragon Buster and get a banish off of this game. Oh, but oh, it was a dimensional bear. He's calling Xyz, so Xyz cannot play right now. So that dweller is basically as good as dead, and the ABC Dragon Buster can tag out because fog blade does not prevent activation; it just negates the effect. So this game could go either way right now. But what is going on? Like, what is there to consider? Uh, with a three card hand, two cards, technically Marcus can be up to four cards right now. Uh, man, that glare is really, really bad. 
Reaper. Detach. Okay, well, he's gonna go for the mill. He can still get the mill. Even under barrier, you can still activate. A judge is confirming that he can activate. Yeah, his effect's negated, but he can still activate. And uh, the Dante will remain at 1,000 attack points. Banishing a Fog Blade to summon out the boots. Destroying the Graph. Graph will be... What is Graph going to do? Uh, Graph is summoning out a Farfa. Farfa, Farfa will pop and aim to banish. Uh, Marcus did not tag out. This, this is very strange and he's very low on life too. With the monster removed, the fog blade is destroyed. Normal summon the cherries. Oh, don't forget. Oh, this is interesting. Cherries is a tuner. Oh. I see how this was. So Tommy takes the match. Um, I see what why Marcus was so scared of tagging out because he was so scared of getting cherried. And he did have that cherry, but he used cherry as a tuner to summon a Virgil to take the game. Well, that was very interesting. That was top eight um, match. We have, uh, of course, our semifinals and our finals coming up. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff, man, the matches get more and more intense. And also there's deck profiles coming as we go. So there we have it. Until next time, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.